Good evening, Don't Unfriend Me Nation. My name is Matthew Spear. I am the host of Don't Unfriend Me. Also, this little tiny show called Breaking Truth. We do this Monday through Friday on most weeks, and I hope you could join me 8.30 live if you would be so bold. Republicans, deep, deep trouble. What if I told you that every American in the United States, 330 some odd million of them, who all make a little bit of money, whether it's from the government, whether it's from uh, chores or maybe some retirement or they have jobs, everybody makes a little something. What if I told you that 330 million people were all approved last night to own a $3.7 million home based upon their salaries, based upon the median average income across the United States? Does that sound like a lot? Yeah, it is. Because the average person couldn't even afford a $250,000 home on the median income in the United States. Roughly $37,000. It's not enough. Now, if I told you that everyone is approved for this three point some odd million dollar home, and then I also told you that you would receive a 4,700 page contract 24 hours before by the lenders, the bank, and escrow company, and all of that to literally put you in debt for 30 years to pay this thing off that you can't possibly afford, would you do it? And not only would you do it, would you do it for your mom or your dad or grandma or grandpa or your children? And not necessarily for you, but pass that on to them as their heir to the throne of the fortune of whatever family you're in. And the answer is not a chance in hell. That's what the Republicans just did is they went ahead and passed the buck on to you and me and everyone else, specifically the 50-some-odd percent who pay taxes in the United States. We're going to cover it in just a few minutes. We're going to try to not make it a few minutes. Honestly, really quick, I want to talk about two companies, Minutemen Coffee. This is the Trader Joe bag of coffee, 16 ounces. That's one pound, folks, four more ounces than all those other coffee companies. The second largest coffee manufacturer, veteran owned in the United States, is Minutemen Coffee. They're good friends of the show. We're partners. And I will tell you this, they have some of the best coffee. You can get K-Cups, whole ground coffee. You buy three bags, you get one bag free, and you can also go ahead and save 15% off. Ask me during my live show how you can do that and i'll make sure i get you that coupon last but not least we have the percival flag company the flag you see right behind me with the ar-15 on it is all custom made out of wood they have amazing choices thin blue line coin collectors everything else you can go there right now save 10 percent off and free shipping just because it's the holidays jason and katie are locally owned they work out of their garage and they deserve for you to give them a visit and buy a flag that's it that wasn't too painless and we weren't over a minute Republicans approved $1.7 trillion last night in taxes to go ahead and fund the omnibus bill. Now, this happens every year. This is like uh, literally getting your prostate checked during your physical. It happens every year. We don't look forward to it. We act surprised when the doctor tells us to bend over or cough, and then we ultimately get it up the keister. This happens all the time. This morning, I posted this. It takes 31,709 years to count to 1 trillion. Your government just spent 53,906 years of your money last night while you were sleeping. I alluded to it earlier. They had 24 hours to make a decision, go through 4,700 pages of this bill, and then Schumer and McConnell stood up there and pretended not to be surprised and say, oh, we've been working on this for a long time. Three months. With the amount of time that they had, they would have had to read four pages a minute, 24 hours straight, to even have a chance to comprehend this. 27 staffers went through it for one of the congressmen, and it literally took them the full 24 hours. Can you imagine a single person? How can they be informed? How can they understand what's in it? Well, they don't. This is why salmon are now protected a heck of a lot more than Africans, Americans, and inner cities based upon the money that they're spending. It's ridiculous. If you look at urban development, if you look at what was supposedly supposed to be in the infrastructure bill, maybe renovation of neighborhoods, 
What about bringing new companies into these areas, creating new suburban homes? None of that is funded in this bill. They threw everything else in it, including specifically saying that there would be no border wall and no money to be spent on anything with the Border Patrol. But we funded five terrorist nations in the Middle East providing and securing their borders. Does that make much sense to you? How about bee highways, putting pollinated trees all along certain stretches of highways so bees have a safe zone? But we don't necessarily care about the bridges and, uh, the bridges and the roadways that are in the United States. We don't care about the train. We don't care about the travel and infrastructure. There was nothing in there about agriculture, about farmers, about how do we ensure that they have the water, the potash, the fertilizer in order to have a high yield in ag this year. It doesn't talk about any of the problems plaguing the United States in regards to energy. We certainly covered giving $47 billion to the Ukraine, which will now be $130 billion to Ukraine in the last 10 months. We figured this out last night, and we did the math, that to fund over 18 months in Afghanistan, we've given more money to Ukraine in weapon systems, and there's nothing with logistics or food or overall personnel or forward operating bases. We're just providing weapons. There is so much more money that is being spent logistically on a war, and we're outspending Afghanistan right now. What's going when are we going to get the receipts to this? Here's what it comes down to. This bill is a giant mess. I went through it last night on the live show, and I'm not going to rehash. I'm just giving you a little bit of idea of how much wasteful spending is there, including a building named after Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. Folks, this is ridiculous. This is what happens every single year. We're told that it's important because it needs to fund the government, but there's nothing about the Postal Service. There's money to give to the FBI. There's money to give to the CIA and the other alphabet agencies. But if you look at USPS, you look at making the DMV better, you look at distribution of dollars to veterans and expanding VA hospitals, nothing's there. It's all about government pork barrel politics. It's just funding their delusion that they're doing anything for the United States. Now, there are some things in there that obviously are important to Democrats, important to Republicans, and I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is why did we need to spend $1.7 trillion to get this done when we already have money on a non-existent budget, which is going into these things? Why did we need to spend more? In fact, not just more, but over 14% more over previous year. Well, could it possibly be because of inflation? You'll hear damn tootin'. That's because of inflation. Of course, nobody says that. Joe Biden won't take responsibility for that. Here's what it comes down to. The Republicans that jumped ship and broke ranks against other Republicans, it's pretty simple. They did it for one reason. Now, Mitch McConnell stood up there and said, well, we have done so much work on this. And, and the backdoor rumors are that he's like, I don't want to go back to the table and work on this. It is what it is. We need to fund the government. Who cares if it shuts down? It's not like everything shuts down. We've had it shut down before. And maybe Republicans should have forced the hands of Democrats and had them go into a shutdown, especially when we're going into a presidential election in 2024. And you could use that political capital. But that's not what happened. They broke ranks, and for one reason and one reason only. The following senators in this picture broke ranks because they want to separate themselves from Donald Trump, from Donald Trump's Republican Party. These are people, and some of them, who have been loyal to Donald Trump. And they all broke ranks and voted for this bill and got it passed through with flying colors. The omnibus bill is a giant waste of money. If it's not for defense, and if it's not for infrastructure, and if it's not going for programs to help the United States and help Americans, then ultimately it's a waste of money. Hence, sending money for borders and weapon systems to foreign countries may go ahead and help us overseas and our interest there, but it does very little on the home front, and Americans are sick of it. I want to tell you which Republicans voted for this so you're aware, because it's important. Murkowski, Republican from Alaska. Shelby from Alabama, Tuberville from Alabama, Boozman from Arkansas, Cotton from Arkansas, Marco Rubio 
from Florida. Grassley from Iowa. Young from Indiana. Moran from Kansas. Kentucky, McConnell. Maine, Collins. Missouri, Blunt. Um, Hyde, Smith, and Wicker from Mississippi. Portman from Ohio. South Carolina, Graham. South Dakota, Rounds. Thune from South Dakota. Cornyn from Texas, Romney from Utah, and Capito from West Virginia. If those names sound familiar, you should be on the phone with your senators and telling them how much you disagree with what just took place. They could have made a stand if they wanted to against Donald Trump simply by making that statement or saying they wouldn't endorse him or his run or that he has to step down instead of trying to break ranks and save face by aligning and maligning themselves with frivolous spending from Democrats. I don't care about salmon in Alaska. I don't care about bees in Washington and Oregon. What I care about is inflation, energy, our military, what we're doing overseas, our border, fentanyl coming in. These are all problems. And with Title 42 on the cusp and brink of failing, you're talking about 5 million illegal immigrants entering our country, which will increase crime. And also it will take jobs from Americans. We can pretend that all those jobs are dishwashing jobs, that all those jobs are gardener jobs. And that's pretty racist, Nancy Pelosi, for you to say that. And we all know that's not true. It takes construction jobs. It takes mining jobs. It takes normal expansion of regular middle-class jobs and people who are creating small businesses will go ahead and hire the cheapest labor possible. And unfortunately, that is illegal immigrants. It's not good for business. It's not good for our country. And we know it's not. And so do the Democrats. And up till 12 years ago, we're screaming to the rooftops that illegal immigration needed to be quashed. These Republicans deserve to be called out, and they most assuredly are a uniparty. They go ahead and they follow the flow. They don't buck the tiger. They don't break ranks in the right way. And Republicans need to stand shoulder to shoulder more important than ever. But what you have is most assuredly a civil war and a fracture inside. You have the 2014 Tea Partiers. You've got the what they say are normal Republicans, the hardliners. And you have the Donald Trump Republicans. There are way too many chiefs in this tribe. We need more Indians. We need more followers. And unfortunately, we need the American citizens to rise up and have a conversation. It starts with making your voice heard. Pick up the phone. Send emails. Don't let this die tomorrow. Because even though this won't necessarily sink America and everyone should take a breath, it's still money that we cannot afford to be throwing out. We need a balanced budget. We need an economy that is thriving. And if we don't, we tighten the belt. Not only did they ask the United States of America to take an impossible situation by buying a house worth three some odd million dollars, using that analogy, not only did they ask us to to, to sign a 4,700 page document and read it and understand and comprehend it, they're asking you to tighten your belt, to spend less this Christmas. To not to go out and be so such of an, an extravagant lifestyle. Maybe take that Christmas trip and, and, and keep it until the summer. They're asking you to tighten the belt because prices are high. They're asking you to understand that food is going to be limited compared to what it was last year. That it's going to be more expensive than last year. They're asking you to do all this as they're going out and having a wild party and taking their six shooters and shooting at the moon and getting a barrel of whiskey and having a blast by spending your money. The average district spent $200 million in the United States, all those little districts in every single state. What could you have done with $200 million for your district? How many roads could be repaired? How many schools could we protect from from school shootings? What could we have done with $200 million? And if you think about it like that, it's much different than just looking at an insurmountable number of $1.7 trillion. We are to blame because we keep allowing this to happen and sending these stooges back 
to represent us when they have no interest to do so. Folks, thanks for watching the show tonight. I do appreciate it. I'm going to go out like I always do with the Veteran Crisis Hotline, 1-800-273-825-8255, press, press 1. 22 veterans commit suicide a day during the holiday season, 25 to 26. It's way too many. You can also press 988 like you would press 911, and you'll immediately be connected to a VCL operator. Traumatic brain injury, PTS, anxiety, depression are all very real, and it starts with a conversation to getting the healing needed. If you know a veteran, please reach out. Every veteran needs a swim buddy and a battle buddy, and right now they need anybody, in particular, you. Please make that phone call. Help a veteran as soon as you can and remind them this will not be reported to their duty station. And if you are a civilian, you can call too, and it will 100% not, not be held against you that you're not a veteran. Mental health is physical health, folks, and I appreciate you giving us a chance to talk to you tonight. Stop by my show, 830 Live. Also, go to my store at don'tunfriendme.com. I always keep myself last. Pick yourself up a dummy shirt, a hat, some coffee as well. You can pick that up from Minuteman Coffee at my site at don'tunfriendme.com. Folks, thanks so much. I will see you tomorrow.